Welcome to another edition of the Pilot Power Show. I am your host, Tijan Ba. This is the show that seeks to enhance the credibility of the constitutional review process. And with me to discuss this important uh, issue is no other than Karamba Jalo. Karamba Jalo is a social researcher and he's been involved in research uh, as regards to the um, draft constitution and other social issues in the Gambia here. So, Mr. Karamba, let's get to know you a little more. Um, thank you very much, uh, Tijan. I'm honored to be here. Um, uh, I am a, a political scientist, I mean, a prospective political scientist. I started my university education at the University of the Gambia, and now um, I've graduated. I'm working with the Center for Research and Policy Development as a social researcher. Okay, Mr. Jalo, let's get into the conversation now. So. Um, Let's hear your views on the Commission, on the CRC. Do you think they have fulfilled their mandate? Um, uh, Tijan, to start with, uh, I think um, uh, the CRC as an instrument of the entire transitional justice uh, mechanism is one of the most um, um, thoughtful and uh, decisive decisions that the government has come up with. Um, because um, the, um, to me, from my own opinion, um, the transitional justice um, process wouldn't fall through without us um, having to uh, engender um, new laws that is entirely um, um, and coming up with a new constitution um, to address some of the loopholes that are found on the 1997 Republican Constitution and also the draconian law. So I guess uh, it was really um, uh, a decision um, that was quite thoughtful and necessary to salvage the entire process. Now. Um, Talking about their mandate and to what extent they've realized their objectives, uh, I was opportune to work with the CRC for a period of uh, one month. And we were there to uh, analyze some of these um, reports and also perceptions of study surveys that they've conducted within the length and uh, breadth of tiny Gambia. And uh, even prior to that, I've been following the process, uh, even before working with them. And uh, to uh, what I can conclude, I, I guess uh, uh, to a greater extent, I wouldn't say all in all, but to a greater extent they've um, realized some of their objectives. Because what is important uh, uh, about constitutions is the local content. Uh, to what extent do the um, enshrinements of the constitution resonate with what people are thinking and also to what extent are these laws uh, reflective of the mindsets and also the realities of, of a nation. And I guess they, they, they considered this and this was also captured in the constitution because they reached out to people for about two or three months not only domestic but even international, they had to reach out to the diaspora to hear their views. They conducted uh, perception studies, consultations nationwide. And I guess um, um, all of these feedbacks they've um, 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 realized or generated from these um, discussions with the people were captured uh, on uh, the constitution. So uh, I guess um, uh, from that uh, perspective, they've um, really um, uh, uh, fulfilled the mandate and were quite close, quite proximate to uh, also realizing their objective. Exactly, exactly. Constitutions are never perfect. Um, however, mm -hmm. uh, observers and most commentators will will agree that uh, we have a very, very good constitution. Yeah. Talking of the of, 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 of that, mm -hmm. let's, let's let's come to the consultation because uh, I think the the Gambian people are a very important element when it comes to the whole issue, mm -hmm. the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, do you think there was sufficient consultation done by the Commission? Um, yes, uh, I would conclude to say yes, there was sufficient uh, consultation. Because um, the consultations were not sectional. Um, they've been to the rural areas, they uh, used uh, uh, the native uh, um, languages um, to um, um, speak to the people and to also make them understand what they were up to. Um, that is to uh, um, come up with a new constitution. And this was uh, not only confined within the territorial jurisdiction of this country. Like I said, they also went outside to reach out to um, um, uh, the, uh, our citizens. Um, those are uh, the people that are residing outside uh, Gambia. And they've also done this in various uh, parts of um, 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 the, the outside world that, that is uh, beyond our borders. They've been to so many um, countries 
to talk to the people and to consult them. And that was not all to it. After that also, I, I talked about the surveys. And these were strictly based on uh, the perceptions of the people. And people did express what they wanted uh, on the constitution. There were issues raised on the citizenship. There were issues raised on uh, the, the term limit, the age limit. And uh, the clawback clauses where um, the constitution would, or the state would tell you that you can do this, but it is dependent on me as a right for you to exercise it. So all of these things were enshrinements of the 1997 constitution, and people were not quite satisfied with it. They wanted uh, to see a change in those clauses. And uh, the CIS, CRC did uh, present to them that opportunity so that um, some of these changes can be done. Exactly, exactly. Um, so now the bill was, uh, the draft was eventually um, taken to the president and it was forwarded to the, to the National Assembly for, yes. for review and voting. Yes. Um, eventually, the, 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 it was a no vote. Um, some will say it was rejected, some will say it's, it's suspended. Um, mm -hmm. First, let's, let's get to know your views on, 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 on the rejection. How did you feel about it? Yeah, I was devastated to be quite candid because uh, I didn't see that coming. Um, to me, the, uh, the essence of us um, uh, I mean, voting for change was to see um, some of these very uh, changes uh, in our statutes, the, those, those are laws, to see that there are changes also being seen in that aspect. Because that is how uh, the nation moves. Uh, citizens are governed by laws. And also, uh, these, these laws uh, reflect the republic. That is why we, we, we would say we attained Republican status in 1907, because yeah. that is when we came up with our own constitution. So um, this change of um, government that we've registered um, in 2016 was um, a shift of, uh, of the paradigm to a new dimension. And that new dimension would also, um, we anticipated, would have also reflected in our laws, uh, to see a change in our laws also. But um, this was hijacked by uh, those that we voted to represent us in parliament. Now, talking about the reason whether um, it is justifiable or it was uh, thoughtful of them to reject it or not, uh, I will always side with the Republican. I will always side with the people. Uh, the reason being that um, looking at the constitution, um, there were some few clauses, con uh, contentious uh, clauses, that uh, some people, some parliamentarians disagreed with. Now, if you were to uh, put that on a balance to weigh. I guess uh, the the majority of the um, uh, clauses where they've uh, got consens uh, consensus on uh, far far outweighs that which they disagreed on. So I guess on that basis uh, they should have um, um, let this thing fall through and not to put the entire transitional justice in jeopardy and the republic. So we will talk a little bit on the contentious clauses yeah. in the constitution, yeah. in the draft constitution. But but first, you work with research institutions, and, and according to a late 2019 survey by IRR, 87 percent of Gambians mm, in this country they say they need a new constitution. Mm -hmm. And according to a survey, a 2018 survey which you were part of, mm -hmm. an Afrobarometer survey, mm -hmm. um, key provisions such as. The five-year terms, 87% of Gambians said they, they want that. Mm -hmm. Requiring a, a voting system in presidential elections, 72% mm -hmm. of Gambians said yes. Mm -hmm. And requiring a national assembly for ministerial appointment, 86% of Gambians also said they, they, they agree with that. Mm -hmm. So do you think the wishes of the people are betrayed? In your opinion also, do you think the national assembly members mm -hmm. have consulted enough with the constituents before they went into voting? Yeah, I, I think um, these um, uh, figures that you've mentioned speaks volume of the betrayal that everyone uh, has been uh, yelling out there. Because um, um, there were consultations, uh, apart from um, um, the consultations and the perception study surveys that, um, uh, how is it called again, uh, the CRC had conducted, there were also um, research that were independently uh, conducted by research firms. I was a part of one. And I've also been participating. Some of these research were even um, sponsored from without. You know, um, like uh, Afrobarometer is based in um, 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 South Africa, and they've got their um, headquarters in um, Ghana. So they had a, uh, they had an interest in what was going on, and as a result, um, people, you know, concerned citizens lobbied for some of these contracts, and the survey was instituted. So looking at all this, you would see that. Um, 
there were so many consultations done apart from that which the CRC had done and uh, the findings uh, correlates all the findings are resemblant of one another so in that basis I would say the parliamentarians of course had betrayed the trust of the Gambians because um, looking at um, these figures you've also mentioned you know the timing is also important but despite the timing this one conducted in 2017 when Barrow was much more popular and 2018 when things started dwindling still the perception of uh, the people with respect to certain clauses to be changed stayed the same. So why would the representatives go to parliament and vote otherwise? Um, that, is, that is absurd. And so yeah. talking of the, the so-called betrayal by members of parliament, uh, we've seen some issues were raised yeah. um, during the first and second reading. Mm -hmm. One of them is the issue of gay marriage, uh, the other is the issue of uh, the so-called discrimination of the president and the the other one was the issue of, of citizenship mm. so what, what's your view on this on this on these clauses yeah i'm um, looking at uh, the issue of um, citizenship i've never um, sided with uh, a new provision being introduced to um, replace um, uh, the one that we had that is uh, the original one that is the uh, from the 1997 Republican Constitution. The reason is that um, I believe um, uh, with this 1.8 million that we have, the government uh, is not even capable of um, satisfying all of the needs that are coming from the policy environment. Now, that is already a concern. Now, imagine um, saying that, okay, any Tom, Dick and Harry that is born within the territorial jurisdiction of this country would automatically come, uh, become a citizen of this country. Then what I say, that means more responsibility uh, on, 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 on the government, mm -hmm. more pressure on our resources, which cannot even um, satisfy the needs of the sovereign citizens that are currently, uh, um, I mean, uh, that comprise of the 1.8 million. So I think um, it is... Um, uh, quite idealistic, not um, also um, attainable. So in the meantime, that is why I dis in the long run it is possible. It is possible that we um, incorporate some of these things and also make adjustments. But uh, for the time being, I, I, I think it is uh, quite um, uh, not, not, not realizable. Okay, so let's yeah. talk on gay marriage and, and, and the discrimination of the president. Yeah, gay marriage, um, I think um, uh, you've done international relations, you've sure. done um, uh, <laughs> diplomacy. Sure. So um, you would on, you've also done um, 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 human rights, isn't it? And um, talking about the issue of human rights, uh, we've seen a proliferation and um, most of these things are often being advanced by um, Westerners. Um, Notwithstanding, um, like I said, uh, we are not uh, Westerners and uh, you've all, um, we also need to understand that there are um, things that ought to reflect a, a country's constitution. And part of those things are the customs, you know, uh, the norms, which uh, should be seen, you know, uh, in a, a uh, in a country's constitution. And uh, I'm a study, uh, student of history. I've read extensively, and throughout our history in this country, even prior to independence, I've never seen where it is reported that Gambians at one point, at one particular point in time, um, uh, we practiced uh, um, same-sex marriage at any point so, in time of our So history. your view is on so, the contrary, right? So uh, to conclude, obviously, I would say um, it is uh, um, not um, even Gambian, and also it is against our norms and our customs, and as a result, I cannot accept that. Yeah. So let's let's move brief, let's briefly talk about the the issue of the the discrimination of the president and how do you think that influenced the vote? Yeah, um, I've I've been invited to so many radio stations where these things were also uh, raised. yeah raised, and I think my position still remain the same. Um, constitutions ought to be uh, progressive. Constitution ought to be forward looking, and coming up with a constitution and also, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, using retrospective uh, clauses. Um, in it. To me, it is quite uh, contentious and uh, a, a, a huge controversy. Now, we came up uh, with a new constitution and we said uh, in this constitution we're going to ensure that there is equality and uh, there is also um, equal opportunity for all and sundry. 
then why would you come up with a constitution and say that uh, the current president? Because those are direct references being made on a, exactly. a national and constitution. Exactly, the constitution is supposed to be progressive. Right? And uh, looking at um, uh, um, uh, the progressiveness of the constitution, I think this is what is ideal. You know, as a student of constitutional administration, this is what I was taught, and these are my beliefs. Uh, Mr. Not, Jal, I'm afraid we don't have much yeah, time. I yeah. think I know you have a lot to say. First, <laughs> let's let's get on some of the progressive clauses, like yeah. youth representation, mm -hmm. women representation. You know, the representation of people with disabilities, and the, you know, the increase in human and social rights. What are your takes on this? Maybe in one minute, please. Yeah, um, I think uh, these are quite interesting clauses uh, because uh, this is the first time that we've seen some of these things, uh, ref uh, I mean, reflecting our national constitution, especially issues that relate to uh, climate change and uh, also your representation, which is much more stressed um, in this draft constitution. So I think um, it is quite um, um, interesting to see it um, um, inputted there because uh, the youth uh, really uh, quite important as far as the discourse of development is concerned. So making sure that the rights are protected, making sure that uh, um, op op opportunities are being presented to them to ensure that they strive and also realize some of the objectives without having to go outside to have these things um, uh, attained, uh, I think uh, is quite uh, commendable. Yeah. Okay, so what, what, what's your view on the, uh, the, the rights of uh, disabled people? and you know the, the the general progressive nature of the constitution can we elaborate a little bit more on this yeah generally i think um uh, when you talk about uh, people with um, disabilities or uh, people that are physically challenged um we we know the society that we're residing in uh, at times some of these uh, people face um, uh, um, i mean uh, discriminations and at times they are not uh, considered they are uh, even sidelined uh, so coming up with clauses that will protect um, their rights, you know, giving them certain privileges, um, I think um, is um, quite uh, progressive. And also about the youths, like I've mentioned, uh, about women representation, having a quota si uh, system in our National Assembly, making sure that there is a uh, balance between male representation and uh, female representation in Parliament. All of these things are, um, are commendable and I would recommend that um, it be uh, reintroduced uh, um, and also... So let's, let's, let's talk about youth representation in particular. Um, the, mm -hmm. the draft constitution allows for um, ten percent of representation in each political party. Um, some will say that this this is proportional. Is ten percent enough? In is ten percent enough? Well, um, considering the gambe in the population, and also looking at uh, the number of people that are sympathizers of these political parties, um, ten percent I will conclude that it is fair enough. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now let's move forward. Um, let's let's talk about the way forward now. Yeah. Um, what, what's the way forward? Do we go back to the 1997 constitution mm -hmm. and amend the so-called bad laws? Uh, we understand that there are, uh, somebody say there are 50 something bad laws that we can change there and we still have a good constitution. But others will say no, we, we need to move forward. Uh, we need a new draft. Um, what, what's the way forward? Uh, I, I guess for the past two or three minutes we've been advocating for um, uh, progressiveness. And I guess we've gone far enough to turn back. Uh, I know that the Republic is somewhat uh, hijacked, mm -hmm. but there is still a possibility since uh, negotiations are ongoing mm -hmm. to represent uh, um, the, um, uh, the Constitution before uh, the parliamentarians mm -hmm. and they will uh, have a second look at it. Um, so I guess uh, right now if there are any real choices that we have, that's the sole choice that we have, mm -hmm. looking forward mm -hmm. and ensuring that the Republic falls through. Exactly. Looking forward and ensuring that the Republic falls through. There you have it, uh, Mr. Karamba Jalo, um, our, our guest for this episode of the Ballot Power. So I am your host, Tijan Bach. Until we come your way next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.